Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you a method that I personally use to combine main components and variants in Figma to reduce the time it takes to make updates to your design system. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Javi and I make weekly videos about product design skills, principles and practices to help you bring your ideas to life and build digital products. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, please subscribe. To tell you all about components and variants, let's dive straight into a Figma file that I've created specifically for this video. Before there were variants, components with different states were documented separately. And you could use the slash notation to easily switch between those whenever you had instances, right? So as you can see, this is approach number one. We have separate components and still no variants. And this was the first way to be able to document components in Figma in a productive way because you could create an instance of this switch. So I can just do that by holding my Alt key and dragging, there is my instance. And as you can see, if we hover over to our right area here, I can easily swap instance between on and off because we are using that slash notation. If now we head over to our layer structure for each of these, you can see that these are completely different components and you can tell that that's the case because there is no relationship between the two, right? So if I make any changes to this one, let's say I wanna change the border radius to six, then you can see that there is no relationship between the two. They are completely separate. So personally, to ease the maintenance of these components, what I would do is nest them whenever possible. To illustrate what I mean, we can have a look at switch to off, which is a component that is wrapping or nesting the on state. So as you can see, if I were to make an instance of the switch, everything that I've demonstrated in approach number one is exactly the same. The main difference comes in terms of the way the layer structure works to ease maintainability, right? So if I were to come here and make a change to switch to on, and let's say I do that exact same change of changing this to six, you can see that now all the changes that are made to my on state are propagating across all the other components because we have that nesting, right? So you can see that this is happening because in switch to off, there is actually an instance of the component that I just changed. And that is why this is able to work. And then Figma introduced variants as an intermediary step to get to interactive components. And it substantially improved the design experience around building components overall. With variants, the main benefits were that now you could create a single unified component for all your states, as well as define component properties that you can use from the inspector to easily switch between them. And to illustrate all this, you can see that I've created switch three, which is the same component that we've been working on before, but in this case, it has variants activated. And if we now have a look at our assets panel, you can see that instead of documenting components separately as we had in approaches one and two, here you can see the main benefit of just being able to drag the component itself and then being able to leverage very easy to use properties on the right side here. So if I wanna switch between active and inactive, all I have to do is toggle between the on and off state of this active property and I configured that property as part of my variance here. And here is where you can see that I have an active property with true and false variance. At the same time, variance inherited the same maintainability shortcoming as we had in our first approach, since every time we are creating a new variant, it's coming together as an entirely independent component. The solution is an approach that combines the power of nested main components and the variant system. I dropped an example here for how that works as approach number four, but we're gonna recreate this one together. So here's how it works. First, we're gonna be creating a main component for our switch. And I can just get that started real quick by doing an alt duplicate of that component that I have up there just to get started swiftly. I'm gonna do Command Alt B to detach, and we can just take it on from here. Now that we have this component in place, we're gonna differentiate it from the rest by changing the layer name to make sure it includes this dot main configuration. 
And once that's there, all I have to do is to make it a component again, is hold my command alt keys and then press on K. And that should make it a component again. The second step is to take that main component that we've just created and make an instance of it just right next to it. So I'm gonna hold my alt key and drag it just right about here. And as you can see on the layer structure, I'm actually gonna bring this one up just to make sure that you can see it in the video. This is right now an instance of our main component. You can tell that's the case by the empty diamond here. And you can see it has all the same properties as our component on the left. And while it's an instance, I'm gonna do that step again of creating a component by holding Command Alt K. And therefore what we now have is a component that is nesting our main component. So that is exactly what we wanted to do. Now I'm gonna differentiate this one by calling it just switch. And once we have this component in place, all I have to do to toggle variants is come over to my right panel here in design and click on the plus button for add new variants. And that should straight away give me a second variant that I can configure. This approach inherits the benefits of the variant system because as you can see, I still have my single unified switch component. I can come over here to my properties. We can name this active and set this to on or off or true or false. And as you can see, just in the example above where we were using variants as well, if I make a duplicate of this, it still has all the same property structure that makes switching between states so easy. The trade-off of using nested components is that you're gonna end up having a little bit of a more complex layer structure when it comes to that main component because you want to be able to account for all of the elements that you're gonna be needing across all of the states of your component. And that is the case because as you can see, as we're nesting, I can't just take this knob and move it to the left, right? Because this is a component that I am inheriting from this main. And you know that when you create an instance of a component on Figma, there are just certain things when it comes to layout and positioning of your elements inside your frame that you just cannot change. The solution to this is to have a layer structure that combines hidden and unhidden elements. So I'm gonna bring this one up so you can see it now. And as you can see, I've created both a knob left and a knob right for this switch component, such that the main component here is going to have all the properties that I need, so we can actually have them both visible. And as you can see, once I make that change, it propagates across all of the instances, of course. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep that hidden by default. And whenever I want to make this switch turn off, what I'm going to do is come over here to my layer structure and turn some layers on and some others off in order to get the component to where it has to be. And now that you know how the layer structure works for the main component, we can come over to our off state here in the switch variants. And all we have to do is use the hiding and showing of our layers to be able to get to the state that we want for this component variant. So in this case, I'm gonna turn on knob left, I'm gonna turn off knob right, and finally, to make this switch truly look off, all we have to do is come over here to our nested component, come over to the color and change it to a color that I've already created that's gonna be called off. And therefore, what we've just created is a component that is leveraging the full power of variance. And at the same time, if we are looking at the layer structure, this is just a nested component of our main switch component here on the left. Now, this was a basic example of a component, right? Because we have a single component that just has two variants in it. But in real life, if you're building a complex design system for your product, it's likely that you're gonna end up having tens of different kinds of components. Each of those components is going to have tens or even hundreds of different variants. And whenever you wanna come and make a change, if you just have all the variants without that main component that's connecting them all across, whenever you make a change, you're gonna to have to go one by one on each of those variants and update the properties in whatever way you find necessary. Now with main components, all you have to do 
is make sure that you have this one here differentiated. So if you ever want to make some higher level changes to the way this looks, you can simply come to the main component and do that. And for example, let's say that you have a switch here and after a while you come to your design system and what you want to do is adjust the border radius to make it look a bit less curvy. So all you would have to do, because you have nested components, is you don't have to touch the variance at all. All you have to do is come here to your switch and start adjusting the layers here instead. So let's say I wanted to make this six, and then I could come here to my knob and also make it six. And as you can see, because we have our nested component, it's working appropriately. The last thing to do is to actually toggle on the knob left and make sure that also that knob left is going to be meeting the changes that we want to take place. So now I can hide this again. And as you can see, all the variants of our component have changed. And all we had to do is make a tiny few changes to the main component instead. Now that was all for today. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, the best way to let me know is to hit the like button. And if you have any questions about this or suggestions about future videos, future content, let me know in the comments below. I love to read your comments and I read every single one of them. I hope you're well, stay safe, and I will catch you in the next one.